We are all better off when American industries are strong, right? That sounds like common sense, but it actually depends greatly on how those industries are being strengthened, their own success or government favors. Let's do a deeper dive. The Merchant Marine Act of 1920, also known as the Jones Act, is a federal law celebrating its 100th anniversary that requires all goods transported by water from one U.S. port to another be carried by ships constructed in the U.S., owned and crewed by U.S. citizens or permanent residents, and registered in the U.S. The intent was twofold, to ensure that the U.S. had a large merchant marine for military use, a dated relic of 20th century warfare, and to make the American shipping industry stronger by giving it an advantage over foreign competition. Has it succeeded? According to the shipping industry, yes. The American Maritime Partnership is the trade organization for ship owners, operators, builders, workers, and more. They consider the Jones Act of vital interest to their industry, and their foremost mission is lobbying politicians to keep it in place. But look outside the shipping industry to the rest of us. In the 1990s, the last time a full evaluation of the economic impact of the Jones Act was conducted by the U.S. International Trade Commission, they estimated the law costs our economy between $656 million to $9.8 billion a year. Why? Well, when competition is reduced, the shipping industry can charge their fellow Americans more. It's simple supply and demand. The operating costs of U.S. registered vessels were 2.7 times greater than those of their foreign competitors in 2010. And with the added cost of water shipping, that means we often use more trucking instead. That creates more air pollution and traffic congestion. Even a small reduction in traffic alone could save our economy billions of dollars and things get really bad for disconnected areas of the U.S., such as Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and Guam that rely on water transport. The Jones Act has made prices of goods from the American mainland so expensive that when possible, they choose to buy goods from other nations instead. Airlines operating in Puerto Rico typically import jet fuel from foreign nations, such as Venezuela, rather than bring it in from America's Gulf Coast refineries. So in short, while yes, the shipping industry benefits from government-granted advantages, their special benefits come from hurting all the rest of us. Think about the taxi industry in New York City. For decades, they had such sway over the New York City government that they were able to pass burdensome regulations that kept out competitors. That benefited the taxi industry, but when Uber found a way around those regulations, cars from out of town flooded Manhattan streets. Taxi drivers lost business, but all the rest of New York benefited from lower costs and higher quality that the new competition provided. If you look only at the narrow perspective of one industry, it's easy to want laws benefiting them, but zoom out your lens and you'll see those benefits mean harm to all the rest of us. I'm John Gonzalez. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and read the full article on our website. Thanks for watching.